Hey, what's up guys? It's Codebra from codingwithcodebra.com and today I'm going to be going over dependency injection. So I'm going to try to explain it uh, very simply. I'm going to explain the different kinds of dependency injection. I'm going to explain some use cases where you'd use it in real life. I'm also going to talk about some third party libraries that people may use sometimes, but let's keep it very simple. So what is dependency injection? Well, let's break down what the two words in them are. The first one you have is dependency. So a dependency is something that kind of depends on another thing. So think about a class that depends on some kind of variable. So say we have a view controller in Swift and we have a variable like an age, so an integer. And that view controller is going to use that variable. So it, the view controller depends on the integer variable. So it can be like a string, an integer, or a custom class, but some kind of variable. So then what is an injection? An injection, we're just inserting something into another thing. So you can think of like medicine. You're injecting the medicine into the human body. In code, we might inject some kind of variable into a class like a view controller so dependency injection is when we inject some kind of variable into a class or a class into another class but you have probably used uh, dependency injection before it's pretty basic in swift to be honest in android it gets a little more crazy because we use libraries quite often but let me just show you first let me make this bigger so i'm going to go over the three types of dependency injections so imagine we have a class and it is a view controller and we have a variable here. So maybe we need to have somebody's name in this view controller. Maybe we're going to display a name. So let's, ha let's make a variable name and this could be of type string uh, optional. Now we haven't set this name like we could say name is Frank. We could say that. But if we don't want to hard code this Frank name into here, what we can do is we can inject the name into the view controller. So there's three ways to do this. The first one is a constructor injection. So if you've ever seen constructors before, constructors you probably have, it's just like a function like this. It's just an init function. And this is going to be called whenever you create the class. So we can say with name of type string, and we can just set self.name equals name. So then when we make our view controller, so let's say let VC equals view controller with name, and we'll pass Frank in there. And then if we print out VC.name, we'll get Frank back. And that's because we injected it in the constructor. So this is an example of a constructor injection. And this is probably one of the more common ones that you'll use. So the next one is a setter injection. So you've probably seen this. Let's get rid of this init function. And let's make our own function called public func set name with name of type string. And let's say self.name equals name. Now let's uh, let's get rid of this old initializer. Let's say let VC equals view controller. Let's initialize it. And what we can do if we run this right now, we're not actually setting the name yet because we haven't called the set name function. So we can use that. We can say VC dot set name with name Frank. And this is a setter injection or a function injection method injection. And if we run that we'll get our name. So we're injecting the name through a function or a setter function. Now this last version that we have, let's just get rid of this and this. This is probably the, the least common version of a dependency injection you're gonna use. So what we can say is vc.name equals Frank. And this is called a property injection. And if we run that, then we'll get Frank. So we're setting this name through the property. And this is pretty uncommon because generally best practice is you would have this probably private. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go over some real life examples and what I have here is just a basic app. It has a table view with some names. So in the view controller, we just set up the table view and the view dev load. And yeah, so pretty basic. Then we have a custom cell, which is basically just a label that we set up. So the first place that you might use dependency injection is say you have a list of names, you already have them, and you want to inject them into the view controller so that you have them already ready to be displayed. So you'd make your array, your uninitialized array of a name of names, and you would just inject it in the constructor. So generally you probably wouldn't do this. You'd probably have like a view model and you're injecting the view model in the constructor. But this is just an example. So we have a let constant array of names and we just make a initializer and just set the names. If you go into the scene delegate, which is where we set this up, as you can see here, we just create our list of, of names and we just inject it when we create the view controller. So that's one example. Another example, if we come down here in this function, I am creating our cell and I'm configuring it. So this is one way. So if I go into my custom cell, as you can see here, I create a setter function, a configure function. You'll see this quite often in iOS apps. You will inject whatever data that you want to display in the table view cell. Because if you look up here, this is the initializer and we don't really have access. If you're dequeuing cells, you don't really have access to modify this initializer. So you might just make a configure function and then if we go back into the view controller, right after you create your cell, you just inject whatever data you need into that cell. So that's an example of a setter injection. Now say, so right now this is a private uh, UI label. Now say we didn't wanna use a configure function for whatever reason. If we just delete that and we make this label non-private, so we can make it public, we could just say cell dot my label dot text equals name and then that's an example of a property injection but you probably won't want to do that in real life you would probably want this either private or private set so that it can only be changed from inside the class so i don't really see when we use property injections there are some examples for example if you come into the scene delegate as you can see here we have this window object and we're setting the Windows root view controller property as a property injection. So it is used sometimes, but generally you're probably not really gonna be using it. So that's probably all you need to know about it for now. Um, there are packages, third-party libraries like Swinjack, and I believe what this is, it's a dependency. I've never used it, but when you have a super big app, and say you have variables that need to be injected multiple different places, like multiple different view controllers, and it's all over the place, you can use these dependency uh, injection managers, which just makes everything kind of easier to use, um, but it's a little bit more complicated and it's not really needed until you have like a bigger app but there are dependency injection managers. So that's something to mind for the future. So that's all I've got for you. If this helped out, then please like. If you want more Swift videos, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. So thanks for watching. Peace.